What is going on guys? Connor from LBF Fishing Guides here today to talk to you about making different types of rigs. Something to keep you busy in the winter. It's a great idea. Today we are going to be specifically talking about fluke rigs um, off the beach and kind of talk about how you could possibly use these on the base side as well. So you're going to need a couple basic things to do this. You're going to need your leader material. Today we're using Cortland, Cortland line 30 pound test monofilament. That's the highest I'd go for fluke. Usually I'm somewhere between 20 and 25, but 30 if I'm fishing the ocean, let's say. You're gonna need some hooks. Um, can you be using the Gamagatsu bait holder size 30 today? You're gonna need something to cut the line. I've got my cut up pliers here. And then to top it all off, you're gonna need something to tie your rigs on. And this right here is called your dropper loop pegboard. Um, as the name implies, it helps you tie the dropper loops needed for most rigs. Very simple. You've got two nails on this side, three on this side. These two hold the spool and then the line. And then these three, you wrap the line around. Very easy, very quick to make, and it really helps make sure your rigs are very precise and accurate, especially if you're making a lot. So, let's get started. We're going to be going over three basic knots today as well. We've got the um, improved clinch, we've got the dropper loop, and then we've got the surgeon's loop. So, let's get started. We'll start off with the surgeon's loop which we're going to need at the bottom of this rig for the weight so you're basically going to take the line kind of pull it up over itself like that so it doubles so it creates a loop then you can take it and you're going to do two overhand knots like so right make an x and then just run it through that hole once and then once more and just pull tight all right that's going to be your where your weight is going to go we'll cut off the tag end just to get it out of the way all right now for the action actual drop the loop part so you're going to wrap it around and then take it over here, give yourself a little more line, and just go around these nails. Like so. And I'm going to have another video, probably next week, show you guys how to make one of these and kind of the spacing you're going to want for it. So I'm not going to talk about the spacing right now. I'll briefly go over it when the rig is done. We'll save that for another video. All right, so here's a close up view of exactly what I'm gonna be doing over here. So we're gonna take the line, right? Wrap it around these nails. And it creates a crossover right here. Take the bottom one and twist like five to seven times, let's say. So there's one, two, three, four more. Six, right, and you got that spot in the middle where I cut my thumb, so that's kind of your dead center. Take it off of the back now, come up, run it through that middle one, <clears throat> and then pull. And you can put it on the nail to help you get a better pull of it all, like so. There we go. So that is your dropper loop. We're gonna do two for these. So then we're gonna do another one. Same idea, wrap it around. And for this board, I have an idea of the spacing why I like everything. Um, it always takes me a couple tries to get it perfect. We'll see how it comes out today. So, right, same idea. Loop again. Take it. Go one, 
two, three, four, five, six. Same thing, create that nice hole loop in the center. Take the end on the back now and run it through that hole. I like to grab this part right here with my teeth, but for demonstration purposes, we'll use the nail because it works just as well. And pull it tight. All right, so now you got your first loop, your second loop, and then your third bottom loop. That's basically the rig right there. Then you're just gonna pull out a little more and give it a cut and where you cut it you're just gonna stick a swivel and this is where your improved clinch comes into play so you're gonna run it through like that and you're gonna twist your swivel six to eight times one two three four five six seven eight and there's a nice loop slash hole right by my thumb you're going to take your tag end and you're going to run it right through that loop And when you do that, it creates a bigger loop right here. You can take the tag end again and run it through that guy. Like so. And then you're just gonna pull tight. And perfect. What I do with all my rigs too, I make them and I'll stick them around something. Like a fixed object usually and pull. And just make sure those knots are as super tight as they can be and that nothing is gonna break on me. Alright, such a basic rig right here. It's got your your three loops, spot for the swivel. This one's pretty well spaced out. I like the distance between the weight and the two hooks. They're pretty equal. So now you need to add your hooks. So there's two ways to do this, and one of them is definitely preferred over the other. You got your simple way where you're just gonna run it. right through the back side like so and then just loop it around but I don't really like this way because you can see it kind of slides off and the hook could easily come off by itself so what I like to do is when you get here you run it through just like that, and then you take your loop and you twist it to create an X, and then you run that over it again, and then you pull. And when you do that, it creates an X on the back, and it doesn't allow it to slip as easy. It's going to stay up there pretty well. Right, so we'll do the same thing with the other one sorry guys there we go alright so remember run it through you run it through just do one twist to create an X right there, nice crossover, and then wrap it around again, and then pull. Alright, so there's your basic rig spot for your weight at the bottom, swivel up top. Now we'll just put the weight on just so you guys everything. Run it through. And this one you can just wrap around once. It's so heavy it's not gonna come off. But this is my go-to rig for fluke off the beach. And I would basically use the same thing in the bay. 
um, slight altercations if I'm fishing bucktails, but let's say the current's pretty strong or I'm just not holding bottom with like a two ounce bucktail in the bay, then I would switch over to this rig and just fish a heavier weight at the bottom. And it works just as well in the bay and off the surf. So that is it for today, guys. Um, thank you for watching. Please subscribe below. Check out my Instagram page. Check out my website. If you have any questions, comments, just want to reach out, my email is letsfishlbi at gmail. Thank you for watching. Uh, we'll have more videos in upcoming weeks about striper rigs, your lure rigs, bucktail rigs, and maybe we'll go over kingfish rigs and kind of your other types of rigs and different knots too. We'll cover a lot in these upcoming weeks. See you guys next time.